Okay, Coach Dresser, C3 here, Florida. Uh, rookie move by you. Uh, let's talk about your rookie move. I thought you were a seasoned vet and a traveler. But uh, <laughs> where, where are your clothes? Where's your luggage? It's somewhere in, in the Daytona Beach Airport right now is, is what uh, they told me. But it was supposed to get in at noon. It obviously, it didn't get with me last night on my flight. I got in late. We had a late flight. So uh, a bunch of coaches were on that flight. Um, so we all got in late. And... My luggage didn't make it for some bunch reason. Of rookie moves, a yeah. bunch of guys pulled. Like, no, what I was you tell your guys not to do. For some reason, it didn't make it from where I, I came from. Actually, with my family, I was at, at OBX in North Carolina. Out of it. Yep. So I flew in from there, and uh, and mine didn't make it for some reason. All right, okay, go. talk to me real quick. I, I like this, your gear first off. Yeah, I got, but I got it all. When we, listen, when we talk about this recruiting, it's the lifeblood of everything you do. You really got to roll on at Virginia Tech towards the end. You leave the freshman set. Now your name. How important is recruiting, you know, coming to events like this and recruiting? It's huge. I mean, recruiting is uh, what, what makes you, it's the difference between being good and great in, in the college in the college wrestling world, whether you're a Division One, Division Two, or Division Three or NAI, it's got to be, you know, it's got to be a priority. How quick do you think, you know, you, I came to Virginia Tech in 2008. You were uh, in that right. old girls' basketball gym, yeah, remember? Right, yeah. right? And then, you know, you guys got a new facility. It you know, started to roll towards the end for you. You got a school trophy. You know, as, as you're leaving, it's kind of a crazy thing, you know. But how long, what's the plan for you? What did you sign, a seven-year contract? Seven-year contract, yeah. So I guess we better start winning in seven years. So, yeah, well, what's the vision for you? What, what, how quick does it have to be top ten for Kevin Dresser? Oh, I mean, I'd like it to be March, but I know that's not realistic. Uh, uh, I think, uh, I think you know, you, you get a full cycle of kids. That's a four or five year process to be a top ten program. Um, if the Iowa State faithful is watching right now, they're probably not going to like that answer. But I think you have to be realistic to see what you've got to do. You know, the game's going to change here a lot now too. The NCAA is changing rules. Um, you know, kids are going to be able to transfer around a lot more than they, they're used to. I mean, in October, um, things are changing and. Kids are going to be able to uh, transfer to universities uh, at their own will. There's going to be no more releases, no more asking the coach. You can just go. So it's going to really be interesting to see how college lineups change. I mean, it, it really is. You guys had some of that this year. Store went to Michigan and some other guys left, you know, who were under Coach Jackson. You know, your brand of wrestling is a lot different than his, how you do things, your systematic approach. But, uh, you know, when you got guys leaving, down, what's that like for you and how do you handle that as a coach? Well, I think, uh, you, you know, you got to recruit your kind of guys and they got to want to be there. Uh, and, and so if you, when you inherit guys, uh, there's, a, there's a courting process both ways. Uh, they're courting us and we're courting them a little bit to see how uh, we're going to like them and they're going to like us. So it's not just a one-way street. The new coach comes in and it's going to be my way or the highway. Kids can take the highway now and they can move on. And, uh, so it's going to be interesting to see how that, that all evolves. Uh, you know, ultimately, we, you know, we, want, we want guys that want to be at Iowa State uh, uh, through good times and bad times. And in the evolution of a five-year career, there's going to be bad times. It's not going to always be uh, uh, butterflies and daisies, as they say. It's going to be there's going to be ups and downs. And, uh, at the end of the day, I just think uh, you know I'm big about the word trust. There's got to be a lot of trust between the athlete, and the coach, and then the coach and the athlete. I call you a game changer. You know, you're, you you got a real simple system. You want a couple things done, and you want them done that way. But the game changer thing for me is I think 2.1 million dollars over seven years. This is the first, you're besides Coach Kale, you, you're the you're you the first guy that we stepped in and you know in college wrestling they paid a multi-year deal over two million dollars, you know, and, and you may look at it, ah, oh, it's not really that much when you think about it, but for college wrestling, that's you. Yeah, you know, and, and I, you know, from day one, the thing besides you know being an Iowa guy and, and getting back home, uh, the thing that sold me probably most on Iowa State was just the vision and the passion to get wrestling uh, in, in a good place at Iowa State. And you know, not that it was in a terrible place, but it wasn't where where it historically was, and so. To, to hear Jamie Pollard uh, share that passion and that vision and, and to give me the resources to uh, go that direction again was big. 
was real big. Knowing that, you know, you're the guy that's probably going to change how a lot of these coaches you're here at this convention with are going to be paid. That's huge. You know, they've got contracts coming up. Guys got contracts coming up. What's that say about what you did at Virginia Tech and, and your systematic approach to, you know, you guys, you guys on your way out, get a trophy, right? I mean, right. on your way out, that's that's your stuff. That's yep. you're responsible for that. But what's that say about, you know, what's that say about how we're going to do this and what you did at Virginia Tech and, and how coaches will be paid in the future? Well, things change a lot in college sports. Uh, you know, you, you know coaching's a, a roller coaster. You know, sometimes you're up, sometimes you're down. You can go back and look at, you know, maybe the coaches that were the hot names and getting it done five, six years ago might not be the hot names anymore. So, you know, it's kind of cool that you can come in and you get, you get a certain amount of time to build it. But... Uh, there is a certain amount of time involved in it. If you don't get it done in a certain amount of time, you know, we've seen evidence in the last couple of years that guys get eliminated. And that's the way it should be. You know, if we're, if we're in 45th place in four or five years, uh, they need to eliminate. That's just the way it is. That's just, you know, we need to be like football. We need to be like basketball. If you're 45th in the nation in basketball for six or seven years, you're going to be gone. And, and I like that, that, that wrestling's become that important AD. I think that car is ready made I think he's ready to go where do you, how do you handle that situation his, his dad is, is three time NCAA champion there's a lot of history there one of the other brothers wrestled for you guys at Iowa State but how do you handle that situation do you wrestle him do you redshirt him you can have it now you can have an All-American this year I think I think he's ready to go well how do you handle that situation with David Carr well first off he's very special um, you know he's he's uh, he's obviously very talented wrestling's really important to him and I think that's the two ingredients you got to have to make a big run at, at a at national title. So he's definitely talented enough. You know, I think uh, there's no question we're going to redshirt him at first. Uh, you never say never, though. Uh, you know, we'll wait and see. Our, you know, our plan is to get him in the Southern Scuffle. Uh, we're going as we, we've got some spots at the Southern Scuffle. Uh, plus, we're taking our team there this year. So we'll get get in there and see how things go. But you know, right now our plan is to redshirt David Carr, and, and uh, you know, with, with injuries, with guys in their weight classes. It's just, gosh, it's too hard to, it's even too hard to speculate right now. Could you do like a Mark Hall thing? Is that, is that like kind of what you're alluding to? You know, with, with the scuffle, what they did with Mark Hall this freshman year? Yeah, I'm not quite sure how that all came about. And I don't remember the details. We were in the hunt, obviously, you know, in that, in that situation in that way. So you pay more attention to it when you're in that situation. Uh, you know, I don't know. We got a pretty good guy that we're excited about. A young, or not so young anymore. He's going to be a fourth year guy. They did a good job for us this year, Chase Straw, at 157. So do we know, is 157 going to be David's weight or 165? We don't know. But, you know, we've got some other guys there that uh, are definitely going to help Iowa State. All right, you got guys wrestling behind you. I want to let you get back to watching. You got anything else for me? Yes, sir. You're the Go man. Zeb. Go Zeb. I love talking to you. You're the man. I feel dumber, but I get smarter. Thanks. There you go. Thank you.